the next irregular imbalance that we're going to look at is the one in which one of the sides is having queen and the other side is having a rook for example a pawn and a knight or instead of a knight a bishop so a light piece a rook and a pawn and this one is uh, called the Lasker compensation the reason for that was that back in 1925 um, Emmanuel Lasker performed a similar idea and this is the most famous case in which uh, it was it was played in his game against Ilinjanevsky I I had to answer this question during my uh, university exam for going into the National Sports Academy one of the uh, assistants asked me uh, what exactly is last year compensation I wasn't sure but since I have being lucky I had just read the book about Lasker some some days ago and I said okay in this game Lasker sacrificed his queen for the pawn the rook and uh, and the bishop and this was the right answer and let's have a look at this famous game in which Lasker is playing with the black pieces and the opening went very well for Ilin um Russian master and a dangerous opponent of that time but Lasker needed to win this game desperately in order to catch up with the leaders in the tournament and to keep good winning chances. Uh, the natural development of the game would be queen takes d2 but after rook takes d2 white is having a very obvious and very nice play. He's going to double the rooks on the d file and he's going to exert pressure against the pawn on d6. This bishop can come on a3, the knight is ready to jump on b5. All in all it's going to be um, unrisk play for the win. Instead of that, typically for him, he decided to unbalance the situation and he took on a2. Uh, various historical sources say that uh, Ilyn Zhenevsky couldn't really understand what's going on and he thought that Laska just blundered the queen. So after rook a1, queen takes b2, rook f, b1, indeed the queen is trapped. But this is only the beginning of the game as, um, even technically speaking, a rook, a bishop and a pawn uh, if we calculate 5 pawns plus 3 pawns plus 1 pawn, this should be 9 pawns, it's pretty much the same as the queen. True, in this particular situation the queen is slightly better, as the pieces didn't yet occupy nice outposts, they are not attacking anything, but um, the fall in the following uh, play, Lasker proved to be the better player simply. The game continued with uh, Rook fd8, he is bringing the pieces in the center, white correctly played c4, he played black played knight e8, and after f4 he prepared counterplay on the queen side with a6, king h1. Uh, the other thing that white could have done, and probably it was better to bring the knight on e3, that was a good plan. From e3 the knight would be controlling the d5 square, thus making it difficult for the second player to create a lot of counterplay even though after b5, cb5, ab5, rook c1, bishop f6, queen d3, um, rook a8, knight e takes knight e to d4, the position remains slightly better for white but it's quite playable. I, I don't really think that black should be losing this one but of course white shouldn't be losing this one neither. King h1, back to the game. Now knight c7, queen e3, rook b8, uh, black is consistently playing on the queen side, rook d1, knight jumped on b4, queen c3, a5, so now we have the knight on a good outpost, rook a1, only here white starts to make uh, mistakes and um, he's losing the path, instead of that knight c2 was too to be preferred and after b6 the the main mistake in this game was queen to e3 which allowed black a chance to play on the squares in which he holds the bishop and uh, again instead of this move he could have played better this is the move uh, say rook d1 intending to meet bishop f6 with queen e3 when after b5 the position is equal, say e5 takes takes, bishop e7, queen f4 trying to create counter threats, bishop e8, knight c3, 
and after bc4 bc4 knight c to a6 uh, the game will still continue black will bring his knight on a5 but most likely white is controlling the situation he is not uh, he is not any worse here uh, while in the meanwhile queen e3 gave a chance for black to attack uh, many things with the move e5 and after knight f5 bishop takes f5 pawn takes f5 knight c2 not only did he won uh, the exchange and now he has two rooks and a pawn uh, for the queen which is a big advantage but his bishop is ma uh, much more active on f6 and the game ended uh, rather quickly in Lasker's favor queen g1 d5 cd5 knight d5 he is opening the roads for his rooks g4 f6 this bishop is dominating the, the board at the moment that's why it was protected like that h4 b5 now the passer comes into the action knight d4 knight d3 queen takes rook takes and the rooks are also coming so this is basically the end of the game after a4 h5 a3 queen e2 rook b to d8 uh, white has no defense against the threat rook d1 check followed by rook 8 to d2 winning the queen because if he takes on d1 this pawn will be promoted and therefore he resigned uh, by the way the other threat was rook d2 followed by a2 and a1 anyway so this is the the game which gave um, the, the name of the whole um, of the whole material balance and uh, since then it is known as the Alaska Compensation.